Hello, welcome to another SSD data recovery video. This time, it's an Intel 660p series. Let's take a closer look. So this SSD has been mailed in and the note attached says, Hello Zero Alpha, I have seen your SSD data recovery videos. My SSD was the boot drive. The PC is unable to see the drive. When we take the drive out and plug it into another PC, it asks to initialize, but when you try, it fails. Okay, let's have a look. So the first thing I like to do is figure out exactly what I'm dealing with. So it's an Intel SSD. They've been around forever. I see these all the time. Uh, this one's got one, two NAND chips. Looks like a cache memory and a main controller chip. Now, mainly Intel doesn't make these controller chips. These are just um, uh, other companies that Intel uses. So this one's SM SMI, Silicon Motion. So basically they've hired this company and they've written their own firmware to make this SSD, which is a bit weird for Intel, that one of the biggest chip makers on the planet, probably are the biggest, that they can't even make a SSD controller chip. But anyway, so this one's 512 gigabytes. Uh, we've got a 3.3 volt DC rating at 1.35 amps. Uh, it looks like the firmware is HPS0 and it's got a HP part number. So this is telling me that this must have been in a HP desktop or laptop before it failed. Made in Taiwan, where all the good stuff's made. Hello Taiwan. And this one is a M key which they have nicely printed there. So uh, that makes sense. So M key is used for PCI Express. Uh, besides the two chips, it looks like we've possibly got some power regulation here. One, two, and three different types of power. We've got possibly input protection, a little crystal oscillator. Let's have a bit of a probe and see if there's, if the electronics are okay. So I've got the multimeter in a beep test and we're just going to check the health of the electronics that are on top of this thing. So I'll pick a common ground on one side and we're just going to probe some random points. Now this should not beep because that's an inductor. So that shouldn't be touching ground. That's good. And we've got some capacitors on, on the input. That's good. So if you're new to testing capacitors, especially decoupling capacitors, only one side should be ground, which is what happened here. Uh, we've got a lot of little filtering caps for the data transfer. I'm also looking for the condition of the PCB. So sometimes you might see something obvious. So um, it always pays to keep a good eye on everything. So. We've got another filtering cap here. Okay, that is on ground. That doesn't seem like it should be on ground. It looks like another inductor, another little coil for a power regulator. So we've got a power regulator here that seems to be shorted to ground and it's the second one in. So it's expected to see different voltages to handle all the different parts of the SSD. You're going to have 3.3 volts coming in. You're possibly going to see 2.5, 1.8, 1 volt for different CPU cores and a NAND. Let's check this one over here. So it is not. So you notice how this one is not shorted to ground? which is a bit different than the second one we tested. That one's definitely on ground. This one is not. Okay, so this, this system here is not shorted to ground. What else do we have? We've got one more capacitor at the back here. So this probably powers these little NAND memory chips, either part of the I.O and it is shorted to ground. So we've found some short circuits instantly on this SSD. I'm gonna hook it up to power with the thermal camera and we'll see what happens. There's that regulator. It is cooking at about 40 degrees Celsius. If we check the back, 
That capacitor that was short-circuited is cooking at 90 degrees Celsius. So that thermal camera activity definitely corresponds to what we found with the multimeter. So this little regulator here was the one glowing. And I say it's being overdriven by something. The other component that was overheated was this capacitor here. And it was also shorted to ground. So I'm wondering if we remove this capacitor first, take it out of circuit, and see what that does with the short circuit. I'm just going to use my little hot air station. This one is tiny, and it's just going to get nice and tight the size of that capacitor. There she is. I'll start by testing this capacitor and see if this is where the short was. And there you go, you can hear that beep. That means this capacitor is shorted out. Let's check our circuit. Now with that capacitor out of circuit, let's see if our short circuit has cleared. So we've got one side on ground, no beep. Remember it was beeping on both sides, so this is probably the ground side. All right, let's go back to that voltage regulator and let's check it out. So it uh, wasn't the first, it was this second one in here. So we'll see if this is short circuited. So we've got this coil, let's go here first. Okay, it's not beeping anymore, which it shouldn't be. Okay, no more short circuit with a bit of luck. So I'm going to get another capacitor and let's replace that one. We'll solder it in and we'll see if that works. So I've got some new capacitors. We'll put a new one down there and hopefully that's all there is and we can get this data back. Now I've zoomed in nice and tight here because it's going to be a bit tricky to solder this in. There's our new one. Now hopefully there's enough solder still on this SSD PCB for this to, to melt properly. Man, this is tricky. This is so tiny. And the pressure of the air pushing around. That has soldered out of place. Just lost it. Looks like a... Uh, We almost got it. I really don't like the position or the fact that there's not a lot of solder on this side. So, you know, ideal world. There we go. It would be nice for the solder to kind of suck it in the position itself, which is happening there. How does that look? I think we did it. So I've got the little capacitor in position. It looks okay. I'll do one last test. Okay, that side's good. And that's the ground side. That's good. If you're new to the channel, welcome along. I upload regular data recovery videos. If you need data recovery services, I'll leave a link to my services in the description. Now we're ready to plug it in. This is always the part that makes me the most nervous. It's detected. We've got the Intel SSD there. We've got the serial number reading. There's that firmware I showed you at the start of the video, HPS0. And we've got the correct capacity, 512 gigabytes. So let's do a quick test to see if it's actually reading. And there it is. 
185 megabytes a second. So we got to get the data off this and I'll get it off fast. So now that we know the SSD is working, we need to locate all the files and the data that the customer wants. So we're going to open up partition table. We got a Windows file system. And there it is. We've loaded all the Windows regular folders. So most people store their stuff in their user account. So we will load that up and we will make a map of everything they want. So I've built a map of everything that the customer wants and I'm going to start saving their files. All the little green squares are good. That means we're getting their data back. So this will take another up to an hour. Depends how much stuff they have and we'll get all their data back.